They have guided ships in the Chesapeake Bay for more than 200 years. Shining beacons, warning sea-weary mariners of the Chesapeake's treacherous waters. The Chesapeake forms a natural highway. And the problem is this highway is littered with hazards in the form of shoals. It can get really shallow, really fast. That can sink your ship. Nearly 2,000 shipwrecks silently sleep on the bottom of the bay. But for a network of life-saving light stations, there would surely be more. This lighthouse is one of a system of lighthouses. As you came up the bay, you would see a light, and then the next light, and then the next light. So you could always know where you were headed. Built by men of a bygone era to protect sailors and their cargo-bearing ships, the charm and mystique of lighthouses still draws us in. Of 74 built, more than 30 still stand watch over the long and jagged Chesapeake coastline. This is a celebration of the Chesapeake Bay's most treasured and iconic landmarks. The journey begins on Virginia's Atlantic coast and charts a northward course to the bay's Maryland headwaters. Many beacons are still important navigational aids. Others were extinguished, but have been restored to their original splendor. Each is a link to the past. It's uh, almost 200 years and really hasn't changed sort of remarkable to me. This is a voyage through the Chesapeake Bay's maritime history, a seafaring adventure showcasing its nautical heritage and the stalwart sentinels that for centuries shined their lights and showed the way. This is the story of Chesapeake Beacons. Chesapeake Beacons is made possible by the MPT Foundation New Initiatives Fund, established by Irene and Edward H. Kaplan. It's dawn on the Atlantic coast, and the Cape Henry Lighthouse has just completed another night's work. Since George Washington was president, a beacon at Cape Henry, Virginia, has marked the choppy entrance to Chesapeake Bay, guiding ships from the Atlantic Ocean into calmer waters. When English settlers first arrived, they set foot on this very peninsula, on the way to founding the Virginia and Maryland colonies. They discovered a shallow estuary, riddled with shoals and reefs that endangered their ships. It was Washington himself who authorized the building of Old Cape Henry Lighthouse in 1789, making it the first official public works project of the new federal government. Standing at 90 feet tall, Old Cape Henry is the fourth oldest surviving lighthouse in the country. Its twin, New Cape Henry Lighthouse, was erected almost a century later in 1881 and stands a lofty 170 feet tall. 207 steps spiral upward. Eventually reaching a lantern room. With a light so radiant it can be seen by a ship's captain nearly 20 miles at sea. The two beacons at Cape Henry mark the spot where Chesapeake Lighthouse history began. At a site where historians believe Native Americans once burned bonfires to help guide Spanish ships is the second lighthouse built on the bay at Old Point Comfort, Virginia. Completed in 1802, Old Point Comfort Lighthouse guards the channel between Chesapeake Bay and Hampton Roads, Virginia. Adjacent to the light tower is Fort Monroe, built a few decades later to defend the lower bay against invasion from a foreign power. There is a dark stain on the history of Old Point Comfort. This is where, in 1619, the first enslaved Africans were brought to English North America. 
Later, during the War of 1812, British forces seized the lighthouse, using the tower as an observation post. From there, they went on to take Hampton, Virginia, and torch Washington, D.C. Rising from the water off Virginia's Middle Peninsula is the third lighthouse on the bay at New Point Comfort. The lone 63-foot sandstone column sits on Virginia's coast, just a half mile off the Matthews County mainland. New Point Comfort Lighthouse wasn't always a remote pelican roost. Commissioned by Thomas Jefferson in 1801, it was built on an island, large enough to house the tower, a lighthouse keeper's dwelling, and outbuildings. But Chesapeake's shorelines are ever-shifting, often slowly, through the relentless force of waves, but sometimes all at once. When the great hurricane of 1933 traveled up the Chesapeake Bay, it cut through the island and left the tower stranded on this isolated spit of land, surrounded by water, and now a pod of long-beaked birds. The light was permanently extinguished in 1963 and is now on the National Register of Historic Places. Houses built on land, like those in the lower Chesapeake, tended to be conical towers with powerful lanterns raised high enough to be seen by mariners well before reaching danger. But as the bay narrows in the middle, so do the routes by which ships can safely pass. Lighthouses were needed out in the open water, nearer to unseen channels and shoals. The Screw Pile Lighthouse is an iconic symbol of the Chesapeake Bay. To build one, iron piles with augers at his feet were turned, like a corkscrew, and anchored into the soft bay bottom. On this spidery substructure, a wooden cottage was built, complete with a keeper's quarters, and above that, a lantern room. In deeper waters, lighthouses were often built using the caisson design. Workers sank a giant metal tube into the muddy bottom, filled the ring of iron with concrete, and then built a house and a beacon on top. Sometimes called a spark plug, Quezon lighthouses better withstood the harsh coastal weather, especially winter ice. During the 20th century, when many of the old navigational aids in the Chesapeake were decommissioned and dismantled, Drum Point Lighthouse survived. The hexagonal wooden structure, built on seven iron screw piles, once stood at the approach to the Patuxent River. Drum Point Light was in service from 1883 until 1962, when it was replaced by an automated light. It sat neglected until 1975, when a contractor working on the new bridge over the Patuxent River was called in to rescue it. It was cut from its pilings and moved by barge over to the Calvert Marine Museum, where it stands today, handsomely restored. Visitors are encouraged to climb inside. The living quarters of Drum Point Lighthouse are adorned with period furnishings and offer a glimpse into the lives of those lonesome light tenders who lived and worked in remote houses out in the water. Cove Point is Maryland's oldest continuously operating lighthouse and is still used for navigation today, an assignment it's carried out faithfully since 1828. Located near Calvert Cliffs on a point of land in one of the narrowest parts of the bay, Cove Point is also a bed and breakfast where guests can spend the night pretending to be lighthouse keepers of old. in the shadow of Cove Point Lighthouse, landing craft dropped their gates and troops stormed the beaches 
as they trained for large-scale amphibious landings in Europe and the Pacific. In Chesapeake Bay, untested sailors and soldiers learned the task of getting from ship to shore. But that time, the shore was a friendly one. Early lighthouses on the bay burned whale oil and later kerosene lamps before switching over to electric bulbs. The Cove Point Beacon's 500-watt lamp is magnified by a special lens based on the great optical advancement of French physicist Augustin Fresnel. Light travels through space in waves and rays from the sun, from the stars. When light strikes a transparent object, some light is bent in passing through. A prism placed this way causes the light rays to converge. A convex lens causes the light to focus at a point and so becomes a magnifying lens. Fresnel's breakthrough in 1822 was to cut a set of wedged prisms into a thick glass lens. The effect was to focus the light into a main beam thereby dramatically increasing the throw of each beam's crucial flash. Cove Points is a modest fourth-order Fresnel lens measuring two and a half feet high. The lens at Cape Henry Lighthouse is a gigantic first-order Fresnel. It's six feet in diameter and over eight feet tall. Each lighthouse has a distinguishing flash signature. Cove Point flashes out a warning every 10 seconds. During thick fog or heavy storms, when the light could not be seen, the lighthouse keeper rang a fog bell, a sound later replaced by the deafening bellow of an automated fog horn. When it came to harsh weather, nothing struck more fear into a lighthouse keeper than the dangerous winter elements. There's bitter weather across the nation. Blizzards, snow, ice. 1939, ice jams encircle Tangier Island. In Chesapeake Bay, the ice jam is an unbreakable barrier for boats. And there's Tangier Island and its fishing community, prisoner of the ice for weeks. 1928, icebergs five to six feet thick, lighthouses evacuated. 1881, Sharps Island Lighthouse carried away by massive sheets of ice. At 7 a.m. on that frigid February morning, ice jammed against the Sharps Island Lighthouse with such a force that every bolt in it seemed to rattle. The house was swept from its foundation and sent careening down the bay with the keeper and his assistant still inside. They survived by launching the rescue boat and rowing ashore at Tillman Island but not before they had saved the expensive lamp from the lantern room. Today's Sharps Island Lighthouse is the third beacon built at the southern end of Tillman Island. The cast iron caisson was the victim of yet another ice flow that rammed it nearly a century later in 1977, causing it to sit tipped at a permanent 15 degree list. Ice was unkind to yet another lighthouse at the dangerous shoals of Hooper Strait. To mark safe passage through the Hooper Strait, after the Civil War, 1867, the Hooper Strait Lighthouse is built. That lighthouse lasted only 10 years. Keeper John Cornwell was on duty in January of 1877 when the lighthouse was sheared off by ice, by moving ice, and sunk. This is January, there's ice on the bay. There was frostbite involved here. It was a terrible experience, but when they built the new lighthouse, keeper John Cornwell still signed up once again for, for duty. He became the first keeper of the new Hooper Strait Lighthouse, which is the one that is today preserved at Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. 
1966, this light, one of the last wooden lighthouses still in service on the bay, ended its long vigil. To preserve it, the lighthouse was cut in half. The pieces were then barged 60 miles to the north from Hooper Strait to St. Michael's and reassembled at their new home. It was the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum that saved and now cares for the Hooper Strait Lighthouse. Visitors who climb inside this screw pile gem can see how lighthouse keepers once lived. Learn about the history and heritage of Chesapeake lighthouses from the past and take in sweeping views of the Miles River and Eastern Bay. Thomas Point Shoal Lighthouse, jewel of the Chesapeake. The red-roofed cottage was built in 1875 and is the last screw pile lighthouse still in its original location. We are on Thomas Point Shoal Lighthouse, which is almost a mile and a half offshore in the Chesapeake Bay. We stand in about eight to 10 feet of water, and it's another 100 yards out to sea before we get into deeper water. Okay, well just follow me up here to this stairway, and we're going up to see the beacon. One of the folks who helped restore this architectural treasure was Bob Stevenson. This is our rotating beacon. It's a model VRB25. The Fresnel lenses here are made of flat plastic, so these little circles you see, this is what focuses our light. Weather and the elements take their toll on the old beacons, and there's the constant need for upkeep. The lighthouses on the Chesapeake need constant maintenance and repairs, or they deteriorate. The rust has taken this metal and just destroyed it. There are pieces like this all the way around the lighthouse. Some are worse than others, so they just have to be replaced. There are volunteers like Bob Stevenson up and down the bay, working to keep Chesapeake beacons in ship shape for future generations. This lighthouse is a National Historic Landmark. It is said to be the most photographed thing on the entire Chesapeake Bay, and I believe that. You look at it with these white walls, the beautiful green shutters, beautiful red roof, the flags flying in the breeze. It's just a sight to behold. When ships sailed under the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, a few miles north of Thomas Point, charting a course for the port of Baltimore, it was Sandy Point Shoal Lighthouse that guided the way. Built in 1883, near the Chesapeake's western shore, the red spark plug rises 51 feet above the water. This well-worn light has seen better days. Under the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act, it was auctioned off to a private bidder. The Coast Guard maintained a beacon here until 2019, but the light was discontinued because the supporting structure had weakened. For many a hale and hearty mariner, Baltimore was the ultimate destination on the Chesapeake Bay. Leading them safely into her booming harbor was Seven Foot Knoll Lighthouse, which now stands beautifully restored in the inner harbor. But when it was completed in 1856, it stood sentinel at the mouth of the Patapsco River, warning ships of danger as they approached the city. But one August night in 1933, the light's warning wasn't enough. When a powerful nor'easter made its way up the coast, a port-bound tugboat crew was forced to abandon ship, and lightkeeper Thomas Steinheis leapt into action. He launched a small boat and fought 15-foot waves to reach the men who jumped from the sinking tug. For his bravery and for saving 14 lives, he was awarded the Silver Lifesaving Medal. In 1948, the last keeper left Seven Foot Knoll and the lighthouse was automated. 40 years later, the lighthouse was moved to Baltimore.
We're standing just off Route 40 near Aberdeen, Maryland. Now let's see what goes on here at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. Aberdeen Proving Ground, where the United States Army tests its weapons of war, was founded in 1917. But the land was already occupied by Pools Island Lighthouse. Pools Island, located in the upper bay, within range of the Army's big guns, was heavily bombarded, but the lighthouse was spared. There's danger of unexploded ordnance here, so it's off limits to the public. Today, the Army is granting special access to a Chesapeake beacon that most people never get to see. Yeah, it, it is hard to get here, but it's almost 200 years and really hasn't changed. Oh yeah, it's definitely great to be back here. It's been a while since Army staffers Mike Wise and Mark Gallahue have visited Poole's Island Light, the oldest still standing in Maryland. The conical tower was built in 1825 using granite quarried in nearby port deposit. The last light keeper left in 1918, just before the test bombs began to fall. Recognizing the beacon's historical significance, Army Brass at Aberdeen launched a major preservation effort in 1996. I had a great opportunity to be able to renovate a piece of history. Under the Army's plan, workers shored up the tower's granite walls and painted the cast iron lantern room. Mike Wise personally handled some of the finishing touches. I took raw lumber, milled it down, and remade the windows precisely the way they were made in 1825. <laughs> That's something. I handcrafted the front door. It means so much to me, this lighthouse, being able to work on it. This has been the highlight of my career. Nature may be encroaching on this sandy outpost, but Pools Island Light is here to stay. Yeah, she's looking good. It's just the exterior paint that needs to be touched up. Lighthouses are amazing. For so many years, it's helped so many watermen navigate safely. Beautiful, absolutely. Yeah. Perched atop a 100-foot bluff in the upper Chesapeake Bay, a towering sentinel with commanding views of the water. Turkey Point Lighthouse was built in 1833 on land that's now part of Elk Neck State Park. In addition to the stunning natural setting, there's the surprising fact that Turkey Point was operated by more female lightkeepers than any other lighthouse in the Chesapeake. The most famous of them all was a woman named Fannie Mae Salter. Fannie Salter was an incredibly strong, independent Chesapeake woman, thinking back to the 1920s and what was typically seen as a woman's role. What she accomplished and what she was willing to fight for, just so that she could do the job she loved, is really remarkable. Fanny Salter was the wife of C.W. Harry Salter, who was a lighthouse keeper here in 1922. He dies in 25. And in that time, his wife Fanny has learned the ropes and she likes living here, and this is a good job. The civil service deemed Fannie Mae too old to take over her husband's duties and denied her request to stay. But her appeal went all the way up to President Calvin Coolidge, who overruled the civil service and gave her the approval to tend the light. Lighthouses themselves are so beautiful and iconic, but they were manned and maintained by people that were equally as iconic. Fanny Salter, she raises her children, she raises turkeys, she raises sheep, and she keeps the light running in perfect working order until the age of 65, which is over 40 years. In 1947, Fanny retired. She was the last remaining female lighthouse keeper in the United States. I think that people that wanted to be lighthouse keepers, men and women, had no problem being on their own to enjoy this incredible location, these beautiful views, and probably the peace and quiet. The Chesapeake is one of America's great inland waterways. Lighthouses are that symbol of hope to the mariners. 
Lighthouses are a memory of the past when navigation was all focused on the water. The Chesapeake was such an important place for navigation, so lighthouses are a symbol of our region. I get a little bit emotionally attached. It's just a sight to behold, and it's the only one of its kind you'll see anywhere in the country. What I see here is just a remarkable piece of art. Once you see that light, you know where you are. The navigator and the keeper may never meet, but they've made that life-saving connection one to another, and that's all through the, the lighthouse. Chesapeake Beacons was made possible by the MPT Foundation New Initiatives Fund, established by Irene and Edward H. Kaplan.